Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel and welcome back to another small engines questions and answers. First of all, I want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel and I also want to thank all you guys who regularly comment and rate my videos. And in case it's the first time you watch this episode, what I do is I answer questions that I receive from my viewers. The first question I'm going to answer today is a question I received in regards to rebuilding an engine in which the connecting rod broke. The YouTuber told me when he goes to reassemble the new connecting rod on the crankshaft, it binds or it's really tight and it doesn't want to turn around the crankshaft and he's wondering what's causing this. What usually causes this is that there is remnants of the old connecting rod still on the crankshaft. As you can see here, this crankshaft here came from an engine in which the connecting rod broke. And you can see small pieces of aluminum from the rod on here. It is a bit rough to the touch. And this sometimes causes the rod to be tight on the crankshaft. You put the bolts back on and sometimes it's stiff. In this case here it does turn. I haven't put the bolts on though. However, even if the rod turns on the crankshaft, you should still clean off the rest of the aluminum burrs that are left on here. And here's an up-close view of that aluminum that's left on there. What works really good to get rid of the rest of the aluminum is some emery paper. You can start off with a 200 and work your way up to like a 600. And make sure to get the one that's in like a cloth paper. It's much easier to work with because it will be tedious. And be patient when you do this. And the aluminum should come off first before you end up sanding off any steel. Although I haven't seen this guy's engine, this is what I suspect may be causing him a problem. My next question is about a YouTuber who rebuilt the carburetor in his chainsaw. He also replaced the fuel filter and the fuel line and when he goes to throttle up, his chainsaw dies. So obviously he's wondering what's causing this problem. Well what I think may be causing his problem is that he needs to turn out the L and the H screws on the carburetor slightly until it throttles up. He also mentioned that it will die out very easily as well. This old saw here is old enough to have adjusting screws and I'll just show you where they are. On this one they're right here on the carburetor and it's these two screws over here as you can see the letter H is there and the letter L will be on the left so the high speed screw will be that one and the low speed on the left. The small screw up here is just for the idle it does not affect the air fuel mixture in the carburetor. So again if your engine's running lean just turn the screws out slightly until you see some improvements. And I just remembered that I also had a question from a YouTuber which was just the opposite of the question I answered. He had also rebuilt the carburetor on his chainsaw, replaced the fuel line and filter and some other parts and his chainsaw was running too rich. So in that case what you'd want to do is turn in the L and the H screw until you see some significant improvement. Another question I got from a YouTuber is regarding my shop lights. He asked me how are they for cold starting? Well, I must say they're pretty good. They're the new T8 bulbs. They're a bit thinner than the older T12s. And these are cold starting lights. Also, the ballast in your light will affect how quickly your fluorescent lights will start up. So don't just look for T8 bulbs. Also look for a specific ballast that is made to start up these lights when it's really cold. For example, it gets up to minus 40 here where I live sometimes. And if you come in your shop and it hasn't been heated all night, you want them to come on. Now when I come in the shop and everything's cold, they are a bit dimmer than if they've been on for an hour and the whole shop's heated up, but they still come on and you can still see what you're doing. And they're spaced approximately four feet apart. And there's three rows by four rows in length. And the thing with these T8 bulbs is that they don't hum when the lights are on. I used to have an older light which had T12 bulbs in it and I could hear it hum all the time. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me, why is one of the augers on my snowblower just turning around the shaft? Well, the simple answer to that is you've probably broken the shear pin. For example, the augers on this blower are separated in three different pieces, and I've taken out the pin on this one, and as you can see, it just turns freely around the shaft. In this case, it's not really going to help to blow snow. On the other hand, these augers here have the pins in them, and you can see that they do not turn around the shaft freely, whereas this one does. So if you see this, just check the shear pin. If it's broken, just put in a new one. And when you replace the shear pin, you want to line up the hole on the auger to the hole on the shaft. Then you want to insert the pin in and make sure to put the clip or the nut at the other end to hold it on. Some of the symptoms of a broken shear pin or pins is that your blower will not be blowing snow like it used to. 
It's the easiest and cheapest thing to check first, so you may want to take a look yourself. Also, for safety purposes, you may want to disconnect your spark plug. The reason for removing the spark plug cap is to prevent the engine from turning over when you move the augers or the impeller on your snowblower. Also, before I end off the video today, I want to let you guys know that you will be seeing some older videos that I may have filmed like last summer. I'm just trying to get caught up on older videos that I taped last year, so they're not necessarily going to be coming out in the same season that they were filmed. We still have a lot of snow here in Canada and it's very cold. It was minus 30 the other day and the weather isn't really improving that much, although it's almost springtime. So this will definitely be a winter that I'm glad to get rid of. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure to have yourselves a great weekend and make sure to see me in my next video.